Hello Year 10, I'm Miss Adams and I'm going to be taking you through the environment movement. If you were in class when I explained the digital focus of this unit, feel free to skip this recap. We have already done an overview of the movement and are ready to start learning about the background to the environmental awareness. As you know, this is the first time we've used technology in flipped learning and therefore I'm going to be as clear as possible about my expectations for you, what we will be learning and how you can maximise your own learning. This course is largely going to be taught through videos, which you're expected to watch at home before class. If this is not done, you will need to excuse yourself and watch the video in the library before rejoining the class, as you won't understand the content and may distract others. If at any point in this unit you want to give feedback about the way it is taught and the use of technology in the delivery of teaching resources, you can speak to me, send me an email, and you can even be anonymous if you want to. Your feedback is very important to me, so if you feel that this method of teaching was helpful or not, I would love to hear your feedback so I can make changes in teaching this topic in the future. Each video I make is going to cover a subsection of the syllabus. Instead of being lesson oriented, the video will be goal oriented and may cover a number of lessons per video. This one should take us an estimation of three lessons to complete all of the activities. You do not have to finish the entire video before next lesson as it is broken into three parts for each lesson, but this could help you understand the content in greater detail as you work in class and I would recommend it. I will let you know when you can stop watching in order for you be to be able to participate in class. Before I start, I just want to let you know that watching Our Planet by David Attenborough on Netflix will help enormously with this unit, especially with topics towards the end. So if you want to get ahead, this is an excellent place to start. Our three lessons will explore the background to the environmental awareness, including the 19th century national parks movement in America and Australia. I will outline what you need to know, but will give you tasks to complete in class time to cement and increase your learning. I'll be in class to help you if you get stuck. Okay, we're going to jump right in. Uh, this is the first part. Here we go. Part one. When we think of threats to our natural world, it is only since the 1970s when the environmental movement began that we began to think of humans as the greatest threat. This is largely due to the way humans have been using resources. The loss of animal and plant life directly affects the availability of the remaining resources, and without these, we cannot survive. Climate change has existed since the beginning of the world. What is unnatural is the pace at which the world is heating up due to human activities. This means that plants and animals cannot adapt and we are facing a mass extinction on a global scale. Pollution is becoming an ever increasing threat from carbon fumes to not recycling materials. Unfortunately, political re leaders are not taking responsibility for climate change. An example being the Adani mine that will begin work shortly in Australia. Another threat to the natural environment is deforestation and habitat loss. It has been estimated that 7,284 kilometres of trees are cut down each year. We cannot keep cutting down trees as they create the oxygen we breathe, as well as home for a plethora of animals. Along the same lines, overfishing, overhunting and overharvesting are draining the world's resources. An example is trophy hunting, when hunting is done for pleasure instead of necessity. This has seen animals such as the giraffe become endangered. Introducing invasive or non-native animals is yet another threat, as the introduced animal could destroy habitats and create an imbalance in the food chain, resulting in native animal decline. Okay, that's almost it for part one. For next lesson, I want you to identify one threat to the natural environment due to human activity. This could be a specific place being affected or a type of human activity I haven't mentioned. Once you've done that, write 200 words to hand in describing what the threat is. All right, so I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds until before we move on to the next part in case you just want to watch part one for your first lesson. Okay, here we go. Part two, outline the origins of environmental awareness and activism. The, environment, oh, the Australian environment movement began in the 1970s to 1980s. This was often done through protests and occasionally direct physical action was perpetrated in retaliation. An example was the sinking of the Rainbow Warrior on the 10th of July, 1985 by French secret services. The attack destroyed the ship which was going to be used in environmental protests and also killed Fernando Pieri, which who was an activist and photographer. This increased public awareness around climate change and the place where the ship sunk in Machiri Bay is still a tourist destination and serves to show that when enough people care, they can't be stopped. 1969 saw the first Australian demonstration for environmental protection with the Coulomb Caves. 
The government were planning to open them for mining purposes, but the Kulong Foundation protested at Parliament House. This battle went on for years, but eventually the government conceded. In 1971, 13 women started a campaign to stop planned construction work at Hunters Hill. This was the last area of native Greenland near the Parramatta River. Again, this process took years, but on 4th of September 1983, the Premier of New South Wales declared the area would not be privatised. This demonstrates how a small number of people can make a difference. In 1972, a disagreement between the Department of Main Roads and working class citizens resulted in squatters being escorted out of the area at Lyndhurst in Glebe. A plan to implement an expressway through the, people's, oh, through the working class people's place of living caused the conflict. Uh, in 1978, the plan was all but abandoned, and this showed that people of any class uniting can make a difference. That's the end of part two of three. For next lesson, I want you to outline an event which I haven't mentioned that can be a protest, a fight for change that brought awareness to the environment and increased public activism. I would like you to write 200 words to hand in outlining how awareness was brought to the issue and how it led to increased activism in the community it affected. Okay, again, I'm going to give you a few seconds. If you want to stop here, that's fine. If you're going to keep listening, let's go ahead. All right, part three. Briefly describe the purpose of the 19th century National Parks Movement in America and Australia. The National Parks Movement was kicked off in 1872 with the establishment of Yellowstone National Park. This was the world's first of its kind and worldwide national parks began to appear. In 1901 to 1909, President Theodore Roosevelt protected 400 kilometres of forest, created five parks and 51 bird sanctuaries. The purpose of this was to preserve the natural wonders and protect wildlife. The first national park in Australia was established in 1879. It was later named the Royal National Park after a visit from the Queen in 1954. America set off a train reaction with Yellowstone National Park and there are more than 500 national parks in Australia today. Australia's national parks had a different reason for existing when they first started. They were originally set aside to stop cities becoming overcrowded and filthy. Now, the Australian National Park's purpose is to protect and maintain wildlife. Until 1916, the national parks movement in America relied on people purchasing land and then protecting it. Uh, unfortunately, some people purchased the land for profit, leading to the need for a unified protection body. The National Park Service. It was started by Mathers, a millionaire, with the support of school children, newspapers and the National Geographic Society. His mantra became to keep the environment unimpaired for the enjoyment of future generations, which he partly achieved through the National Park Service. Okay, that's the end to the background of the environmental awareness. For next lesson, you need to pick one national park's establishment in the 19th century. So, um, like Yellowstone National Park, but don't pick that one because I spoke about it. Once you've done that, just make dot points about the purpose of the national park and how it fits into the national park's movement. So, um, did it happen a month after Yellowstone National Park? That sort of thing. Um, be prepared to have a class debate with one side arguing for the national parks being established and one side against this. So just explain why at the time some people wanted uh, national parks to exist and be protected and some people didn't. All right, that's it. Um